Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. So we're going to go through and give you our top picks. It's a little bit like our hidden gems, but there's some great games and some not so good ones. And we're going to tell you why. Yeah, nice one, Mark. As you say, very much like our buy and avoids of old to give you some sort of idea as to what to get and what not to. The first game that I'd like to recommend is Observer. We have a review of this one up if you'd like to check that one out. But this really takes the Blade Runner format and puts it into a first person adventure game. Now although this version isn't quite as crispy as the PC or PS4, I thought that it ran really well and the dialogue in it is brilliant. The conversations you have and the fact that you're playing as Rutger Hauer added a level of atmosphere. It has a lovely mechanic whereby, just like in some of the Batman games, you can switch the camera to investigate crime scenes, look for blood spatter, and solving the case to find your son is very hands-on. Lovely. Right, my first pick then for a game that I would recommend you consider is Yoku's Island Express. Now this is a very interesting concept in that it merges together Metroidvania aspects with pinball. As bizarre as that sounds, it actually works really well. So the basic idea is that you play as Yoku, who is a dung beetle, who goes on a quest to bring peace to an island, but the only way he can traverse said island is by using the flippers that you will find on the screens and bumpers to make jumps and move up higher onto the levels. At first it sounds a little bit finicky, but it actually works very well in practice. Experience amazing abilities. Save the island from a terrible fate. Yeah, I was really jealous when you did that review. I just wanted to play it. It looks lovely. The next game for me is another recommendation. We're going to try and weigh more heavily on the positive games than the negative ones because that's probably more helpful. And it's Firewatch. Now, this first person story driven experience is a little bit of a walk in simulator. The actual interaction between you and, and another female fire warden is what makes this one so special. There is a bit of a mystery story in there as well, but it was the pacing of it that I enjoyed so much. You know the feeling you get when you watch a film like Stand By Me, Glenn? This one has that kind of feeling in the game. As you play it, you feel like you've really been dropped into a movie. How many hikers go missing in the Shoshone? More than none, unfortunately. Why? You know, if it makes you feel any better, you're a member of a diverse club of lookouts that have come to the thoroughfare after a breakup. We didn't break up. We didn't choose to break up. Well, I'm happy to listen. And, you know, we'll try to have some fun this summer. I promise. Uh, D? Okay, I'm going to put one in now that I would recommend you avoid, and that's a game called Vegas Party. Now, I pre-ordered this game ages ago because I quite liked a game on the Super Nintendo called Vegas Stakes, which was a casino simulator of sorts. Now, I pre-ordered this. It was dirt cheap. It was about £10. I want to say that's no, £10 too much. And then I forgot all about it, and it kept getting delayed, and it came out about a year later, and it just dropped on my doormat one day. But the worst thing about this is absolutely ridiculous is that you cannot turn off the motion controls whilst you're playing in handheld mode. So while you're trying to move the cursor with the, the D-pad, oh. any small movement you make with your hands moves the cursor. Sad about? What were they doing? <laughs> it's ridiculous, honestly. Not a good game, don't buy it. Avoid at all costs. The game that I'd suggest you avoid, probably don't need to really suggest you avoid it. It's uh, called BB and Tina. 
Now, I know this might have caught one of your eyes, and uh, yeah, I don't think I need to say much about why you need to avoid it. Just check out the trailer that you're seeing right now. I'm actually going to mention another game that I think you should check out, and it's an unusual one, really, considering the current history of it. And it's The Walking Dead now that the full final season is out on the Switch. This is a brilliant series. I'm sorry, I don't care what anyone says. Seeing the journey of Clementine over the several seasons has been amazing. And I think they did a great job of actually getting it finished. Not just because they went bankrupt. But some of the story decisions you have to make in this one are absolutely grim. So if you're a fan of it and you've kind of let it leave your memory. I would still say that it's worth picking up on the Switch. And finishing it with this final chapter. Our only hope is to distract them while we sneak on board. I have something I need you to see. So you can understand what you're asking. If you want my help, try and walk with them. There are three kind of eyes, Clem. There are live people eyes, and there's monsters eyes. And then there are live people eyes right as you kill them. Glad you blew a candle out. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to do another one to avoid then, and it's a game called Monster Jam Crush It. Now, I bought this game, when the Switch first came out, I went a bit mental, and there weren't that, <laughs> yeah, I did, there weren't that many games to choose from then, and Amazon were having this um, promotion, it was something like, spend X amount of pounds on Switch games and get £30 off, and I was £20 short to get the £30 off. And this Monster Jam game was £20. So I, I saw it as spend 20 get 30 back. Buy, so buy it, to save. Absolutely. Speculate to accumulate. So I bought this game. It's absolute dog pants. It's terrible. <laughs> it's a monster truck game, but it's about half an hour long. You, you, you do these little challenges. They're absolutely ridiculous. It's like, you know, drive 10 yards forwards and you've passed. Or It's really, really poor. And even though I actually earned a tenner by buying it, I still feel ripped off. How does that work? Not good when you feel like that, is it? <laughs> I like how you say when the Switch first came out, every time I come round your house, Glenn, there's a new box from Amazon or Base. Oh, yeah, I just picked up that copy of... But don't you own that digitally? Yeah, but I needed it physically. Okay, mate. Yeah, when it first came out. <laughs> okay. The next game that I would like to suggest that you avoid it's called Snowboarding The Next Phase. Now I picked this one up, I thought, yeah, this is nice. It's from some of the SSX developers. Looks very smooth indeed. It's got the Red Bull label. That wasn't really an appealing thing, to be fair. Glenn described it perfectly. It's uninspiring. Now I have reviewed this one. I can't remember what it got. Middle of the road something. It's, it looks okay. It seems to play okay. The tracks are way too short. In hindsight, I should have picked this up in the review. They're far too short. And the progression just feels so samey. Didn't like this one at all, really. Okay, I'm going to recommend one this time. And it's Layers of Fear Legacy. Now, I know you can get this on other platforms. And I'm not saying it's better on the Switch necessarily. But what I will say is I found it so much scarier playing it in handheld mode. Because when you jump, or when something makes you jump, it's right in front of your face. And it's a very hard feeling to describe unless you've played it. I've been playing horror games and watching horror films since I was way too young to be doing so, trust me. But this is the first game that made me feel genuinely unsettled and it wasn't necessarily the game, it was what the handheld experience brought to you. And I've played the Outlast games on the Switch, I've played another couple of horror games, this one does it best. Playing it in handheld mode and having something make you jump in your hands is a very very terrifying experience. There was obviously a load of hype surrounding this next one when it released, and it's Thimbleweed Park from Ron Gilbert. Now this classic style adventure sees you taking on, well that's a smolder and scully isn't it? And also a range of other strange characters including a slightly alcoholic clown and a ghost. It's got a beautiful classic style, all your old look at, pick up, open this that they got rid of over the years. They've bought it all back and it works brilliantly with the touch screen. Earlier this evening, we found a body down by the bridge. I don't remember calling the Federinos. Was the money deposited into my account like we agreed? I think it's time we came clean and told the truth about why we're in Thimbleweed Park. 
You first. What do you know about the Pillow Factory fire? Whoa, now! You're the fed. Lovely, right? My final pick then is another one that I would recommend, and it's Azure Striker Gun Vault Striker Pack. Now, these two games that you get in this pack were available on the 3DS first. I would describe them as being most similar to Mega Man games in terms of the gameplay mechanics. And the reason that I'm recommending this one now is that over the last few months, this one has dropped quite dramatically in price in terms of the physical version. I picked this up around Christmas time for about £17. Now, this was a game that hadn't dropped below £35 in all the time it had been out. They're two very good games, and if you can find it for the sort of price I've just mentioned, they're absolutely worth picking up. Well, I really enjoyed making that list. Let us know down in the comments. We've added a couple of the things that you suggested, like a buy and avoid logo in the corner. That was a nice shout. Let us know down in the comments ones that you're playing at the moment. Maybe there's some that you'd really recommend people check out. As always, guys, we really appreciate the conversation we have down below in the comments. Yeah, I'm sure you can appreciate that a buy and avoid guide that consisted of Mario, Zelda, Troll and I would get very old very fast. Every other video on the internet says that. So we have picked games that are a little more obscure and we will continue to do so. We hope you enjoyed our picks, take it easy and until the next one, happy gaming. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys, see ya!